Now it's time for our Heroes of the Week. And since its inception, the Irish Guide Dogs for the Blind have trained over 2,000 dogs for the visually impaired and more recently for children in need of assistance. Although they rely heavily on volunteer donations and events each year, they celebrate 40 extraordinary years of excellence this month. We're absolutely thrilled to have them with us today. We have CEO Porrick Mallon, student Derek Kennedy with his dog Patsy, and Judy McGrath with Golden Labrador Dexter. You are all very, very welcome. Good to Thank see you, you guys. Thank Pork, you. we should say congratulations first. Mm -hmm. Congratulations for doing so much for so many people that we're going to hear, of course, from Derek and Judy and, and their stories today. But the reality is the Irish guide dogs would not be here if it wasn't for the consistent work of your organisation and the funding and all that. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, 40 years this year, 1976, was a different time in Ireland. It was a different time for people with disabilities, mm. people who are vision impaired. And um, due really, I suppose, to the persistence really and forethought of two, two very wonderful people, Jim Dennehy, who's still very much with us as our yeah. president, and Mary Dunlop. Uh, and they founded the Guide Dogs back in 1976. 40 years later, here we are. Uh, we have trained so many people, we have supported so many people, giving people the opportunity to live a life of independence, with confidence, and to go out into society. And all of that has happened through the extraordinary work of a team of people, volunteers, yeah. staff, donors, trainers, trainers and everybody else, bringing it all together. Um, and really it's as vital today as it is then because disability continues mm -hmm. and people need that opportunity to have access to training, have access to support and to just really to have that chance in life that... Um, to be independent. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, and it's, it's, it's all part of our society these days. We're very, very familiar with Park scene, people with dogs and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But I can't imagine, mm -hmm. if you went back more than 40 years ago, people who would have been blind, mm. visually impaired, not having these mm. guide dogs. There were no services, Dahi. There was absolutely no services for people, little or no services for people who were blind or vision impaired. And um, at that time, like, the only option was to go to England for training with the long cane or to go to uh, England for training with the guide dog. And that would have been unattainable and unaffordable for a lot of people. Let's take us back to, to the story of a guide dog. I mean, these are very special dogs that are, that are picked out because they have special skills. Not every dog will make it. They start their training at like six weeks. They go and live with the puppy handlers. Is that right? Or that they're yep. the carers? Yep. We breed, and we breed all of our own dogs. To, then from there, really a, an enormous volunteer effort kicks in. Yeah. And um, we have puppy walkers who are based all over the country and they take the dog into their home for, 12, for about 12 months, 12 to 14 months. And they're basically, they're socialising the dog. It's a really important part. Um, you know, when you see Dexter here and you see how well he's trained, mm -hmm. you know, and you see that that starts with a volunteer effort. Mm -hmm. They come back into our centre. They're trained by our staff. And then at about two years, they're either matched as a guide dog or they're matched as an assistance dog for a child with autism. Are there dogs that don't make the cut? There are, Dahi. Okay, uh, yeah. We prefer... Uh, we co um, they, they go on, though, to do a lot they of very important things. things. Yeah. Companion okay. dogs for uh, children and adults mm. with disabilities. Um, they well, can... you, you know that certain dogs will be suited to certain topics mm. or certain people and certain tasks. Yeah, that's the, really the skill of the trainer, really, okay. that is identifying the dog and working with the dog. They're looking at the dog and they're thinking about, will it be an assistance dog, just like Dexter is, mm -hmm. or will it be a guide dog like Patsy? Okay. And, and we're thinking about that. Straight and away, about you them. know, as, as yeah. they go on. Yeah. Now, Dexter is an assistance dog to your son, Sean, he who is. has autism, Judy. That's correct. And, and I know this from speaking to other people who have assistance dogs, that I'm sure Dexter totally changed your lives when he came into Sean's life. He did, for sure. Um, we got a diagnosis at age three, and yeah. we had done quite a bit of work already by the time we got to have Dexter at about age six or seven, Sean was, when we got the call up. Yeah. We were so lucky. So we just feel eternally grateful for it. And um, we had already started on the road and made a bit of progress with Sean. And what Dexter did for us, I mean, he did so much, firstly, but um, he, he increased things that we had already started building with Sean. I suppose the first thing would be he increased our acceptance of the diagnosis and Sean's yeah. acceptance of it. Um, because if you make a decision as a family, right, we're going to bring this dog into our home and he's going to have the guide dog, assistance dog, um, badge on him and we're going to walk around into society with that well you're telling him we're okay with you and yeah. uh, you should be okay with yourself too and but there's another side isn't there really that especially <clears throat> children with autism often they have issues with socialization and everything absolutely and they nearly relate to an animal quicker 100 percent. yeah so there yes and his confidence again then the next one of the next things would be his confidence would would have gone through the roof because number one he related to dexter immediately as soon as he walked in the door yeah. he took responsibility for him so sean's independence increased massively as well 
Um, at the time, he wasn't taking care of himself, but he would feed Dexter and he'd walk Dexter. Yeah. He felt responsible <laughs> for him, you know? Yeah. And he shortly that passed on to doing it for himself as well. Yeah. Um, also, his confidence out in society, I mean, we were going from a scenario where we were having very upsetting scenarios in supermarkets and in playgrounds when Sean would get overwhelmed with the world. And people don't know what to do. They're afraid to help. They're afraid Dexter to say Dexter would anything. chill him out. Yeah. Exactly. Well, when we didn't have Dexter, they, people would walk away and leave us on our own. Mm. We felt very isolated. They didn't, they didn't know what to do either. They didn't know what to do. Yeah, and I wouldn't have known what to do if I was them either. But when you have Dexter, immediately people come to you. And we didn't have a sign saying, don't talk to our dog. We wanted that because you're right with, with autism. It's socialising is an issue, so Sean started chatting to There are so many people. different branches there, Judy, isn't there? Uh, yep. Dara, what, what does Patsy mean to you? And uh, how, does a, how does a Kerry man get out with a cork dog as well? <laughs> <laughs> we, have our, we have our moments. Uh, <laughs> um, she changed my life. She um, brought the confidence that I had lost. She brought it back. She um, lets me get out there in, back into the world. She's your eyes, really. She's my she? eyes, yeah. She's, she's a part, like, we're... Or one, like it's, it's not two mm -hmm. different people, it's one person. Mm -hmm. So when you met her first, did you have an instant bond? Um, yeah, we did, like, um, I got the call and they said we might have a dog, we have a, like a practice walk, and we just, it, we just linked straight away. Mm -hmm. There was no mm -hmm. doubt about it. Because for somebody who is not blind, we, we, we wouldn't really know what it feels like, but yeah. you had the experience I did more. actually, because chatting to mm -hmm. your organisation, chatting to your trainers, I actually met up with Natalie and with Catherine and we walked just on the South Mile here, but I was blindfolded just to really appreciate what it was like. And the reality is it's so different because we're talking to you guys who were talking to Dara, but you don't realise until you have to walk with the dog with a blindfold on. And I actually felt that I was being, that I was running down the road and I was all over the place and I, you know, I was, I was, my confidence was gone. No, they didn't clear the path for you or anything, no? <laughs> they, no, they no, didn't. seriously, no, as in... No, no, well, no, but like, no, the dog this was... was the order, this was an ordinary yeah, walk down the road. And, and all the things that you have to do, you know, you're walking along and holding yeah. and all that. But the re what I felt was, look at me, I'm all over the place. But the reality was I thought I was really going fast yeah. but they were saying that I was just walking at a regular pace and I felt seriously Dara I totally I, I saw it through your eyes are true. Yeah. Patsy's, who is your eyes? So really, I, I get it, and I think people should try that sometimes. But were your other senses, senses heightened then? No, I didn't. I just, I was very nervous. But so I can imagine what it's like to, like you, Dara, to get used to this it, it, in life, that you have to live your life every day like this, you know? And Pollock, when you look at people who really get behind this campaign, you've Roy Keane, of course. He's, mm. all, he's been there for a good few years and now. Sonia. Sonia, Roy and Sonia, fantastic yeah. ambassadors. Sonia they bring their yeah. attention onto us, you know, mm. and they say, if Guide Dogs is okay for Roy and for Sonia, it's okay for us, you know, uh, as, yeah. um, as donors or as volunteers or as supporters, you know, and mm. we're so reliant on volunteers uh, to run the organisation. Well, in every aspect, from the money side of it, from yeah. walking the dogs, caring for the dogs, there's Absolutely. so much there. Absolutely, and, 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 you know, it's not possible it's just not possible to train these dogs mm -hmm. without the support of volunteers. And just puppy to put it in perspective, though, Porrick, yeah. it takes about 50,000 to train mm -hmm. one of these dogs. Uh, you, it takes 5 million to run your organisation yeah. a year and you get 800,000 from the government. So you're, you're basically looking at raising 80,000 euro a day. A, a, a week. A week, I should a week, say. 80,000 uh, euro a week. And that's a lot of money. It's yeah. a lot of money for any organisation to need to raise. Yeah. Uh, it brings its own pressures to an organisation. Um, it makes us think very hard about what we do, how we spend the money that we get. And we work very hard to make sure that mm -hmm. uh, we give the best value for money for every euro that we get mm -hmm. and use that money to actually train as many people as possible. Because that's what the public want mm -hmm. when they support guide dogs. They want to give that opportunity to a person who's blind or to a, a vision impaired or a family of a child yeah. with autism. 40 years, congratulations. We have some, uh, two euro, that's all it is. Yep. And you you've got help. a fundraising week, a don't fundraising you? Week. We do, which is our, we call it Guide Dog Day, but it really it runs, for a, it runs for a week. And we were saying earlier that we, that we fundraise all of the time. And one of the ways that people can give, which was a very simple way that they can make a decision today to support Irish Guide Dogs, they can leave a gift to Irish Guide Dogs in their will, and that will change a life into the future Great. at some time in the future. When is the fundraising week starting? Fundraising week starts on April 29th. Great. Thank you very can much. I just say hi yeah. to Kate, Dexter and Ringsy, our, our guide our dog puppy walkers who ah, mind yeah. our dog and kill them. Um, still a major part of our lives and our family. So, so after, after this you have to go walk the dogs now. Go on. <laughs> go to work, guys. Thank you very <laughs> much. Thanks,